some of the more advanced sources of multilevel modeling, including research articles and textbooks, present the multilevel model as in matrix form. To understand these uh, sources, it's useful to understand what these matrices are about. The multilevel model in matrix form is fairly simple, but if you don't understand the logic, figuring it out can be a difficult thing to do. So, for example, Stata User Manual explains the multilevel modeling in the standard matrix notation. The idea here is that we have a fixed part xb, x beta, and then we have the random part consisting of z, u, and, and the error term e. Let's take a look at this equation in more detail. So we have a few elements here. We have the y, this is the observed dependent variable values. It's a vector, so we have one dependent variable. There is one column, multiple values for each case. Then we have a matrix of the observed predictor variables, and uh, that has multiple columns and multiple rows. Then we have the, the vector of the regression coefficients. There's just one model and multiple coefficients and rows. Then we have uh, the error term e, and uh, this y equals x beta plus e is also just a linear regression model in matrix form. The multilevel model or mixed model adds this mixed effect or random effects here, and uh, we have z, which is a matrix that allocates the random effects to the cases, and then we have the random effects vector u. Let's take a, and these, these uh, x and b are called design matrices because uh, they uh, specify how those effects that are estimated are allocated onto the cases. The reason why they're called design matrices is a bit historical and it, it originates from applying regression analysis for analysis on d data from experimental designs. And these uh, beta and u are parameter vectors estimated by a computer and we don't actually estimate u directly but instead we estimate the variances of these random effects. Let's take a look at a numerical example to understand what goes into these matrices. So in our example we have nine observations in three groups with random intercept so y, x, beta, z, u and e are the matrices and vectors and we have the dependent variable values here y's we have the x's here, and we also have ones, a column of ones, that is for multiplying the intercept. So the intercept is multiplied by one before being added to the cases. And then we have this uh, random intercept part, so intercepts, how these u1, u2, and u3, three different values that are unobserved are allocated to the cases. We can see that y1 is used on the first three cases, y2 used for the third, uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and the final three get y3, and then we have the error terms here. If we start multiplying this out, we can see that uh, these are the fitted values of the regression analysis. How we get the fitted value is that we take the first cell of the, uh, the design matrix, we multiply the first cell of the, uh, the parameter vector, then we move on to the second uh, cell in both, and third cell and we just take a sum. So uh, that gives us the fitted values. This has nine rows and this has one column. So the resulting uh, thing is uh, a nine by one, nine rows, one column matrix. Then the same applies to U. So we use U1 for the first three cases and so on. And then the error terms are just added like they are. These models are not estimated uh, by estimated random effect values. Instead, we estimate what Stata calls G, and uh, this is a variance covariance matrix of the random effects, and uh, then we check what is the likelihood of obtaining the uh, data or the residuals that we got from the model by comparing it against the, the variance covariance matrix. So in practice, what we do is that we take the fitted values, we subtract the fitted values from the observed values that gives us the residuals E, and then we calculate the variance of these estimated random effects and error terms. And this is the covariance matrix. So there are the first three observations covary because they share a random effect. Their variances are the sums of the random effects plus the error terms. Then uh, the, the, the second three observations co-vary because they share a random effect and the final three observations co-vary because they too share a random effect. And uh, 
then we just uh, find uh, the parameter values that make these uh, residuals E from this uh, covariance matrix to be as likely as possible. So that's a maximum likelihood estimation. In practice, we don't take the full residual vector and compare it against the full error covariance matrix, but we work one cluster at a time. Because these clusters are independent, they don't correlate the error terms. We can just calculate the likelihood of the first three residuals from this three by three submatrix. Then we calculate the log likelihood of the second uh, cluster and the third cluster by looking at those submatrices. We take the sum of the log likelihoods and that's our full likelihood. The reason why we work with submatrices instead of this full matrix is computational. It's a lot simpler to work with smaller matrices a lot faster. So how about random slopes? Let's take a look at uh, this example here. So uh, the random slope model means that the slope of xi, x1, is the sum of the fixed part beta plus the random effect. So the slope of x1 varies between clusters. And we can reorganize the, uh, the equation a bit. So we, we have the fixed part here, and then we have the random part here, and uh, we just put those into the matrices. The fixed part is, is the same xb, there's no difference. And now what we have here is that instead of simply adding each random effect by multiplying it by one, we multiply this, uh, these u1i random effects with the values x11, x12, x13 and so on. So instead of adding the random effects uh, by multiplying them each by one, we add them by multiplying them with data. And then we work, uh, we get the covariance matrix similarly and the estimation proceeds similarly. So this is the, uh, the multi-level model in matrix format. If you are interested in knowing how it works when we have generalized mixed effects models, we simply add a link function here and, and, and that's it. So uh, there is not, not much difference between uh, estimating uh, a normal, uh, specifying a normal GLM in matrix form and specifying a multi-level GLM in matrix form.